two, NIST and FEMA did not follow the National Fire Protection Association standard procedures for fire and explosions investigations and or test the debris for explosive residues. Three, NIST did not test for explosives when explosive demolition was the most likely hypothesis, given that all high rises that have come down uh, before have been destroyed by explosive control demolition, and none of them have been destroyed by fire. <coughs> Four, this animated computer model of Building 7's destruction, showing the outer walls crumpling inward like a piece of foil, bears no resemblance to the actual collapse as seen in the videos. Next, NIST claims that the falling section of each of the Twin Towers above the jetliner impact zones crushed the much larger and more massive intact lower section. But video analysis reveals clearly that the upper section <coughs> actually disintegrated in waves of explosions prior to any of the crushing of the lower sections. This indicates that the top sections could not have been the cause of the destruction of the lower sections. Six, this technical analysis into the tower's collapse stops at the initiation of collapse. There is no technical analysis of the structural behavior of the building during the collapse itself. In response to our request for correction on this matter, NIST acknowledged that they were unable to provide a full explanation of the total collapse. In short, NIST's official technical explanation is fraudulent and impossible under the basic laws of physics. By contrast, the provable scientific hypothesis of explosive controlled demolition is consistent with all of the available technical forensic evidence. Yeah. 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 So at this point, the architects and engineers for 9-11 Truth are calling for Attorney General Eric Holder to empower a federal grand jury to investigate those responsible for NIST, including lead investigator Sean Sunder and co-project leader John Gross. We'd like any and all reporters who will be covering this story to know that the architects and engineers for 9 11 Truth are here to help you in any way possible in order to break the story of the crime of the century. We'll give you the credit for our hard work. Just get the story out. Yeah. Yeah. will not be alone. In fact, our press conference on Thursday at the National Press Club in Washington, D.C. on this subject was also being held concurrently in 65 cities throughout the world, including 30 states and four countries, by our AE 9-11 Truth petition signers. And this on the heels of having personally delivered this evidence in the form of letters, brochures, DVD, and our new newspaper, the 9-11 Investigator. It's Woo! being held out now. You be sure to get your copy today for free. We are doing something, we are doing everything that we can to wake up the sleeping and to poke those who would keep them that way. And to that end, tonight, we shine a light on the still, officially, unexplained freefall collapse of World Trade Center Building 7, which is the key to justice for the family members who have lost loved ones in the Twin Towers. So look into the New York City's evening skyline tonight at 9.11 p.m. Yes. And ask yourself this question. What can I do to shine a light on truth and justice for the family members and the first responders? Amen. Woo! Yeah. I'd like to thank the thousands of scientists senior level members of the military, intelligence and other government officials, pilots and aviation professionals, firefighters, scholars and university professionals, whose work is the foundation of our effort and who support us so much. We'd like to also announce the formation of two new, three new 9-11 truth groups simultaneously in New York and Los Angeles at press conferences. First, the military officers and officials for 9-11 Truth.
Actors and artists for 9-11 Truth. Yeah. And finally, scientists for 9-11 Truth. And med medical professionals. And we also have medical for professionals for 9-11 Truth. Lawyers for 9-11 Truth. No, no journalists for 9-11 Truth. Veterans for 9-11 Truth. No, I don't think there's any journalists for 9-11 Truth. We also want to thank the growing family of more than 300 sustaining financial supporters of architects and engineers for 9-11 Truth. We could not do this critical work without you. Now we'll answer any questions that you might have. And also, though, more detailed information is available on our website and in our DVD, 9-11 Blueprint for Truth, The Architecture of Destruction, which is available on our website, ae911truth.org. Great. <clears throat> information and packets are available here for qualified members of the press. Come and see us. Are there any questions today? I got one. How many angels are protecting you, Richard? All of us. <laughs> we have lots of angels protecting everybody who speaks the truth, because angels do that uh, for a living. Richard, <laughs> Richard, I understand Building 7 was brought down to some kind of uh, flaw in the engineering design. Um, has there been any special directives, emergency bulletins issued to engineering schools around the country to avoid the same kind of flaw? And will the term thermal expansion appear in any textbooks in the near future? <laughs> Unlikely to both uh, questions. We have very serious problems in all or many or most of our skyscrapers across the world today if Building 7, through thermal expansion of long span beams, can drop that building in six and a half seconds. There's been no code changes since 9-11-2001 that addressed the free fall collapse of skyscrapers due to thermal expansion. It's a big problem. <laughs> What's Next? your message to uh, skeptics? Over here? What's your message to the skeptics? Well, for those of you who have a hard time understanding the 9-11 truth message that's spoken by virtually all of these people here, I say take courage and look at the evidence. They stop calling us names as soon as they start looking at the evidence. Right. And I encourage you to do that too. How do you suppose the thermite and nanothermite was applied to the buildings? Could you repeat the question? How do you suppose the thermite and or nanothermite was applied to these buildings? Well, we know in the case of the Twin Towers that the elevator cores run simultaneously next to the core columns and beams in those buildings. If one had access to those elevator cores, they'd have access to plant explosives throughout the columns and beams in the core of that building. In fact, if they had an excuse, something like an elevator modernization, they would not be seen by the tens of thousands of occupants. And indeed, we did have such an elevator modernization in the nine months prior to 9-11. So we're also asking for an investigation of Ace Elevator, who had that contract, and the security company, Stratasec, Securicom, who was guarding uh, that elevator hoistway. Neil Bush. What about the nanothermite? Uh, nanothermite is a highly... Manny. Right nanothermite is a... Come closer. Nanothermite Come forward. Is, is a highly energetic material which is which has fallen with all of the World Trade Center dust in small chips, unignited. It appears to be in these chips, it appears that it might have been sprayed on to the building components. We don't know much more than that. That's why we're calling for a real investigation. Richard, Question over here. I got, I got one. Why did they cover up the Building 7 explosion? Why would Building 7 explosion have been covered up? Well, it was so obviously a controlled demolition that they didn't want that to be known. Uh, so we have an elaborate seven-year investigation, you might call it, more like a fraudulent attempt to hide the truth of the building's controlled demolition.